Hey guys, I'm Woody, and this is Technical Tuesday. It's a new series I'm starting, Weekly Thing, where I talk about technical topics. It might be RAM, it might be CPUs, it might be GPUs, it might be rendering or microphones or whatever. The stuff that I know things about. Anyway, this week it's going to be about NVIDIA's roadmap, and in particular, their stackable RAM, or I mean DRAM. This is the roadmap that NVIDIA released. I don't know, about one month ago. And on the left, it's not labeled, but that is gigaflops per watt. It is uh, one way to measure GPU performance. And on the bottom is the year, as you might expect. So in 2008 came Tesla, and it's awesome. And it had the CUDA architecture, which is an API and, and set of instructions that helps me a lot personally in terms of playing games and making videos. And then came Firma, and then came Kepler and then Maxwell is coming up soon, but what's really interesting is Volta. Volta and Extact RAM could change the game, and let's talk about why that's important to us. So a normal graphics card looks something like this. You know, you've got your PCB board there, that little PCI connector thing. We're drawing this out, and you know, you know all the little gold connectors that go into the motherboard. That is where the HDMI or DVI or DisplayPort stuff comes out. But then here's the interesting part. This is the GPU, and surrounding the GPU are these little memory spots here. So um, each of those memory spots needs to connect to the GPU. It does it by a little wire on the circuit board. If you don't know, that's how a circuit board works. It's kind of like having wires built into it, and it keeps it clean. And you can see here, my OCD got the best of me, so I made it even. This is how it works today. That's how memory sort of, you know, orbits the GPU. And the trouble is that each of those green lines, those little connectors, they are slow. They, they're actually slowed down by the speed of light. So the distance they are from the GPU is a problem. There's a solution. This is a profile of the next generation of chips. And here are the same little connectors that go into the motherboard. And there on the side is the, the connector. So you see, we're looking at this on the side. And there's the GPU that sticks up. Traditionally, those things would be there, just so you get your bearings. But we're not going to do it that way this time. This time, we're going to put the DRAM right on top of it. And we're going to stack it like that. And then we'll connect it like this. That's faster. It's faster because the signal between the GPU and the RAM has much less distance to travel. Tricky to cool, but I hope they figure that out. Here is a more professional picture, if that helps you visualize it in some way. So, how much faster is this? What difference does it make? Well, this is a comparison of the GTX 680, it's the card I have in my PC right now, versus the theoretical Volta card, and it is the memory bandwidth between the two. I tried to format this chart a bunch of times, but it just kept looking like a lot, a thousand, versus nothing. What we're comparing is 6 gigabits per second, which is what the 680 gets, the card I use today, versus the Volta, which is about a terabit per second, or a thousand gigabits per second. The difference is huge. Next, I thought to myself, all right, great. I get that that's better somehow, but what difference does it make? Why should I care what the memory bandwidth is on my graphics processing unit? You know, I've never cared before. <laughs> or maybe I did, but I'm a bit of a nerd that way. The difference is how many things they can put on the screen. And forgive me for my horrible flying. Look at what we have here. We have kind of a plain background. There's no buildings on here. There's nothing interesting in this world and uh, you probably played other games like Skyrim or I did this on purpose I swear <laughs> you probably played other games like Skyrim or Borderlands like big world games where as you approach the horizon buildings just kind of pop up in front of you you know buildings that weren't there once before well there's a reason for that too they just can only put so many things on the screen when you're uh, lim limited by the bandwidth that you have on your memory you, know, you, you can only process so many things it can only do so much when um, you know you, you're stuck with today's cards in tomorrow's world this entire thing might look like the residential landscape of New Jersey dare to dream right but just picture you know like suburbs and houses all over the place all populating your screen instead of an image of some mountains that really are kind of nondescript with a bit of a map stuck in the middle that's what tomorrow could bring 
In Call of Duty or Battlefield, when you watch glass break, instead of just some pre-rendered animation that doesn't seem to make a difference where you shoot the glass, these things could break based on where it's hit. Instead of just, you know, you would get that same animation that you just saw regardless of where you hit it. And in the future, I'm going to start shooting in the corner and, uh, and you'll see the thing just breaks from the top. It doesn't matter where you shoot it. It just says, all right, let's do that glass breaking animation. In Battlefield 3, when you tube a or grenade launcher a building, that building breaks with that same repetitive animation every single time. In the future, it can be based on where you shot it. It can be different. It can react to other things in the game. It can be rendered in real time instead of sort of a, a pre-done animation. So that's it. I chose a quick and easy topic for our first Tech Tuesday, but I'd love to hear your ideas on what you'd like to see in the next Tech Tuesday. Would you like it to be bandwidth based, network questions? Would you like it to be rendering questions, microphone talk? Uh, let me know and vote up each other's comments so that uh, I can see the ones that catch most of the attention. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good day. Uh -huh.